Hi and welcome back with another tutorial video. In this video I will be showing you how I made this character from scratch. And we will be going through every aspect of uh, character making process including the modeling, sculpting, texturing uh, and baking as well. So for most of my tasks like modeling and sculpting I will be using Blender. Uh, but for the baking I will be doing that in Marmoset Toolbank and for texturing I will be doing it in Substance Painter because uh, most of these tools are the industry standard. I like Blender so for sculpting and modeling I use that. So when you are starting working on a character the most important thing is to gather as, as much references as possible. So as you can see here in my pure sheet I have almost um, a 60 to 70 images so I might have looked at least 400 to 500 images and then picked and choose all these references that I find useful and I edit those in my project. I mainly divided uh, my references in multiple sections as you can see that uh, I have some head references for the faces and uh, I have some proportions references or anatomy references here as well. I also have references for the ears and hands and you can see they are in different poses so uh, they help me when I'm sculpting different shapes. I also have references for the head elements that I want to add uh, to my character. Uh, since I didn't have a concrete references I was uh, uh, looking at uh, different elements to be added into my character. I also have a main reference or main inspiration for my character. Uh, and uh, you can see we have some cloth details and uh, some uh, pattern references that uh, I want to replicate on my characters. I also have some topology references for the face as well. Some bracer references which I wanted to be added to my character. Uh, later on I went with this golden one for my character. You can also see I have some cloth folds and design references as well. So references are very important. For the texturing I have also added some RBX images and uh, because it helps identify uh, different shapes that I want to paint uh, in my textures. I also have some iris references, some references for the lips and eyes as well. So references are really helpful when you uh, hit a blocker while you're sculpting. References help uh, you identify the shape so that you can sculpt easily so it is very important to get there as much references as possible so generally when you're sketching the character and uh, you want to nail down the basic forms uh, pretty quickly uh, you usually follow some conventions for the proportions so you might have heard of uh, seven head sizes or four head sizes or eight head sizes for the proportions uh, of the characters so normally when you're following a seven or seven and a half uh, head size uh, for the proportions you usually divide all of the elements so for example we have this uh, head size here and uh, usually when I'm working on character I imagine a head size although I do start uh, sculpting from my ribcage so we have this head size and uh, normally our ribcage is uh, one and half head size and then we have a roughly half to quarter head size gap between the ribcage and the hips and uh, our hip elements are normally half head sizes our femur is the longest bone in the body which is uh, the thigh bone so it is almost uh, roughly one and a half head sizes as well and our tpa fibula is one and quarter head size and then where we have some uh, generally less than a half head size from uh, tpa fibula to the foot and uh, for the arms we have a humerus which is uh, one and uh, a quarter head size and then we have radius and ulna which is uh, one and quarter head size as well and uh, after that we have hands we, which is uh, I roughly consider them three quarter of head sizes for the proportions so that's how I divide the my proportions into multiple steps and uh, I make my characters according to that 
although there is a lot of variation in the proportion for example for kids we usually consider or children's we usually consider four to five head sizes and uh, that's just a convention you can uh, change the proportion to your needs for example uh, if you have watched an anime like Attack on the Titan, you usually use 9 to 10 head sizes as a reference for uh, their characters. So these are the basic proportion guidelines and uh, <coughs> they are just guidelines, you don't have to follow them uh, strictly uh, because uh, in real life uh, a proportion vary from person to person uh, but generally it's the same. And as far as the actual sculpting goes, I usually start from uh, a base mesh, generally for most of my characters, but uh, because this character was for a tutorial series, I started from a sphere and uh, normally I stick to my basic brushes, uh, which are uh, 4 to 6 brushes like uh, the clay builder brush, the draw brush, draw shot brush and uh, crease brush normally I stick to these uh, three uh, or four basic brushes and uh, I sculpt uh, most of uh, my major landmark uh, from these uh, brushes and while I'm nailing down uh, the basic proportions in the start I'm basically looking at the skeleton because skeleton is very important when you're working on the characters for example uh, if you start uh, diving into the details for example you're uh, directly working on the muscles instead of working on the skeleton uh, no matter how detailed uh, you draw uh, or sculpt those muscles uh, your character will look broken you should also sculpt uh, places where the pony landmarks are visible uh, it will act as a guidelines in order to help you understand the skeleton a bit better for example uh, near the hips the hip bone is uh, visible and you should exaggerate that and organic characters everything uh, work in the rhythm for example when you are sculpting on faces uh, uh, i start with the orbitals so you sketch the orbitals and uh, uh, below the orbitals you sketch the zygomatic bone or the cheekbones and when you take the cheekbones to the back we have the mastoid process where the ears start from so we usually sketch ears from there and uh, below the zygomatic bone we have the mandible and or the jawbone we sculpt that as well so when you are sculpting characters everything work in the rhythm so if one of your landmarks is not correct it will affect the rest of uh, uh, the landmarks as well so when i'm uh, working on the characters i usually work with uh, uh, patients uh, i don't uh, uh, dive into the details too early uh, because uh, when you uh, sculpt a basic landmark and if it's not correct uh, the other landmarks will deviate from there as well so I take my time and uh, tweak all the landmarks until they are exactly in place and then I move on to the next step next step of adding details so after the skeleton is correct I move on to the basic forms and uh, for the forms I divide uh, them into three steps we have the primary forms, we have the secondary forms, and we have tertiary forms, and uh, then we move on to the finer details like the skin pores, uh, wrinkles, all the finer details uh, in that. In primary forms, I sculpt uh, most of the major volumes of the character, for example, uh, all the muscular shapes like the pectoralis muscles, uh, like the trapezius muscles the obliques and all that stuff and for the secondary forms I divide the muscles into smaller groups for example we have three heads of the deltoid so I divide uh, them into secondary uh, secondary forms and then I sculpt on it so when you, you uh, divide the character into primary forms uh, it becomes a very systematic way of sculpting so for example I don't add more resolution into my mesh when I'm working on the primary forms. First I take my primary forms to a to a level where I think that uh, the character is looking good and uh, I can move on to the secondary forms and when I'm moving uh, from 
primary to secondary forms, I add more resolution to the mesh and uh, that, that in that way it's more easy to manage uh, the resolution and so that the blender file doesn't get too heavy and it's easy for me to sculpt. So when you're sculpting, uh, it's almost impossible to nail all the forms and the landmarks uh, to their perfect position and their perfect forms on, on, the, on the first go. It's not a linear process, it's kind of a circular process where you add the landmarks and then uh, add other landmarks as well, then go back and tweak the first landmarks. So it's a kind of a back and forth process and it's need, it needs a lot of patience to refine those forms. So while I'm working on, on my characters in Blender, I usually uh, take them to a specific level and uh, then I, I, I do add some light and then I take some renders and check how the forms are reacting with the light and if I could find some additional information on uh, what's wrong and what's right in the character and how to fix them. As you can see uh, in the video that I'm tweaking my forms again and again, uh, I'm going back and forth. At first I sculpt the eyes, smooth, uh, change the shape of the eyelids, then I move on to the lips, then I move on to the nose and tweak it uh, a little bit. And then I go back to the lips and then go back to the eyes. So uh, I try to uh, refine each and every thing and then I occasionally take out some renders and uh, look at my face in a different lighting scenario. So now that I have reached a point where most of uh, my primary and secondary forms are roughly complete. I will now move on to the clothing and for the clothing I usually draw a mask and then extract th that mask and uh, then I use quadri measure to generate nice clean uh, and quadded out topology and uh, then I add a solidify modifier to add thickness to the mesh and uh, this is my uh, most uh, this is my main workflow of how I sculpt uh, uh, the clothing pieces. I draw the mask because it's easier for me to not to worry about the topology or the mesh at the time. So I use quadri measure for that to clean up the topology. And uh, if uh, uh, by using quadri measure, uh, if there are some artifacts, I just manually clean those up. And you can see that I'm also tweaking the pose of uh, my character as well. Um, I'm also checking whether my skeleton is uh, working correctly or not and uh, I'm also looking at my references and uh, looking at uh, what type of clothing uh, I do want on my model so I'm drawing masks for that and then extracting those out and uh, then tweaking uh, those uh, cloth pieces uh, according to the mesh using a uh, grab brush or standard brush or sometimes using clay builder brush as well so it's pretty simple process. I'm just masking, extracting, using quadri measure to generate clean topology, and then uh, uh, tweaking those meshes so onto the form of my character. And after my clothes piece is finalized, I add a multi-resolution modifier so uh, I can sculpt some primary or secondary forms on top of the clothes as well. And uh, I have been asked uh, uh, this question a lot which is uh, uh, when to use Dyne Topo and when to use Remesh and uh, when to use the multi resolution modifier. So I don't use uh, or don't prefer the Dyne Topo as well because uh, it's just a per personal preference for me. I use Remesh instead of uh, Dyne Topo. So when you're generating volumes uh, on your mesh, for example, uh, when I was starting uh, from a sphere and I wanted to sculpt uh, different forms on it, I would uh, start uh, with the remesh uh, in order to add more resolution onto the character. And when I take the character to a specific uh, step where I don't have to add uh, more uh, volumes or extract different forms from it, uh, I usually stop there and then I do remesh using uh, quad remesher to generate clean topology and then I add a multi-resolution modifier 
uh, on top of the clean topology. Uh, using Remesh and Dyntopo has some problems because it's uh, not very efficient and uh, it's uh, very costly for Blender to render all those polygons. For example, uh, when using uh, a Remesh or Dyntopo, uh, if you generate uh, four to five million uh, polygons on a single mesh uh, then your blender will probably probably be a lot more slower and uh, in case of multi-resolution modifier you can probably take uh, a single mesh to uh, 24 or 40 millions and uh, uh, it will work a lot more smoother than the Dynetopo mesh or the remesher mesh so for the helmet piece that I am currently working on, I, I use the same thing. I just uh, draw a mask on top of it, then extracted that mask, and uh, then I used uh, the remesh, which is uh, you add uh, uh, topology through controller in your subremain in in your sculpt workflow. And uh, after sculpting the basic landmarks, I use I'm using the retopo flow three to to generate different panels of the helmet as you can see that now the most of uh, the helmet panels have been generated so I'm uh, closing all the gaps by moving the vertices together and uh, then I'm adding some bevels where I want the hard edges and uh, after that I am adding a subdivision modifier on top of it I'm also uh, looking in the render view like uh, if there are uh, no bends or onto the mesh because this is the hard surface uh, this is going to be the metal part and it will have a lot of reflections on top of it so I don't want uh, some uneven bendings on the model so I was checking that in the render mode and the same technique is used by all of the uh, artists that are working in the industry uh, in order to generate a really complex hard surface shapes we usually sketch out uh, all those forms because it's easy to move uh, you don't have to worry about the topology of the model at that time so you, it's very easy to just sketch out all, all those forms and then use a uh, retopo tool to just uh, convert all the all that mesh into some cleaner forms and then you add subdivision modifier or bevels wherever you want and uh, it, the mesh will be a lot more uh, cleaner so even after sketching the basic forms and then uh, using a retopo tool to generate a nice clean mesh um, I'm using uh, a lot of uh, I'm doing a lot of tweaks onto the mesh I'm moving a lot of vertices in order to uh, tweak uh, the mesh into my desired form or shape that I want for my characters. I'm also tweaking uh, my lights and I'm um, experimenting with different light setups so that if there is something wrong with the form, uh, I might be able to quickly notice that as well. I'm also rendering as well and I stored the screenshots uh, of the renders so that I may be able to compare where I was uh, uh, when I was working on the characters before and where I am now. So I do store all those renders for a feedback for me and uh, sometimes uh, if uh, I'm extracting additional panels I check if the topology is favorable onto uh, the below mesh so uh, for that I select uh, the polygons and uh, duplicate them and uh, change them into the desired shape so right now i'm working on a coil like pattern on top of the helmet so even though i could do this uh, with curves as well but i preferred uh, doing it with the mesh uh, i'm also using a edge set flow add-on uh, which averages out the edges based on the differences so I'm using that to uh, smooth out those curves as you can see and uh, I'm also changing the thickness on the ends of the curves so after uh, completing the first step I decided to duplicate it and move it into position and uh, I tweaked it a little bit so that it flows nicely with the first curve 
after that i rendered it out and uh, uh, looked at how it feels with the rest of the helmet whether it's uh, uh, aesthetically correct with the rest of the helmet or not right now i decided to create some ornamental designs on top of the helmet so i took a uh, sphere and uh, extruded some faces out and then i moved the faces into some uh, branch like pattern and after that i duplicated it again and uh, after moving after creating multiple branches i will add a multi resolution modifier and uh, i will use uh, Damien, uh, draw sharp brush to carve in some nice fine details on top of it and mostly i'm looking at my references and uh, i tweak uh, my meshes according to it and you can see that i'm duplicating uh, multiple elements of that and uh, look how look at them look at the meshes and how they feel uh, whether they are worth working on it whether they are worth finalizing and right now i'm just carving in details with the draw sharp brush and i will also add it multi resolution modifier on top of it and uh, mostly you can see that uh, for the tips i'm using pinch brush to uh, modify the shapes uh, into place i just want a nice flowery design uh, here so i'm carving uh, these details so so i just uh, using draw sharp brush to create a nice uh, crease inside then uh, uh, use the invert of this, that brush on top of it and uh, right now i'm just uh, duplicating and placing all those meshes on top of the helmet and uh, 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 seeing whether uh, it works with the rest of uh, the helmet or not whether it's uh, complementing the model or uh, it, whether it's uh, destructive on top of it so usually at this point um just mo mostly uh, uh, creating my meshes as you can see for the clothes pieces I just uh, masked it out and extracted it out uh, I didn't spend too much time on it uh, detailing uh, the clothes piece before moving on to my next mesh uh, because I think if I spend too much time on a single mesh and after adding it to the model if uh, it is it, it doesn't work well with the aesthetics of the character I will have to uh, remove it and uh, uh, it will uh, a lot of my effort will be wasted uh, for that time and uh, by this approach by adding meshes quickly and filling up the space it uh, allows you to see your mistakes uh, pretty quickly and uh, tweaking those in the early stages of the character that's why I'm just uh, creating my meshes uh, although for this piece I'm uh, adding a lot of details because uh, I did place it on the helmet and I thought that uh, this looks good so uh, I'm just uh, detailing this part of the mesh specifically although I didn't detail uh, uh, the cloth pieces or the other pieces as well. Right now the rest of the meshes or the cloth pieces are just placeholders for me uh, to work on later uh, because I'm uh, looking at the aesthetics of the mesh so right now as you can see I just uh, duplicated some of the faces and I did use on top of it and then I add a multi resolution modifier and a displace modifier and I plugged some of the textures in the displace modifiers uh, some patterns and uh, uh, I increased the strength for it and you can see that we have a nice pattern on top of our models and uh, you might be thinking that uh, I should have added uh, these uh, pattern like details in uh, the texturing phase because uh, it's less uh, performance intensive uh, uh, but uh, I prefer adding it in the molding stage for example in uh, textures you are mostly dependent on the UV shell but here in sculpting you can just uh, uh, duplicate few faces and uh, throw a pattern on top of it without worrying about the seams and uh, you can uh, tweak the pattern however however you want in the sculpting stage so it's very easy for me to do these changes in the sculpt stage so for this part that I'm currently working on I just uh, create a single strip of meshes an X pattern and uh, applied an array modifier then uh, did a curve deform modifier on top of it and uh, for the pattern is the same I'm just uh, 
duplicating faces and add a multi-resolution modifier and then a displace modifier and uh, uh, throw in a pattern on top of it and <coughs> and it generates a nice pattern and i like to do this in sculpt stretch uh, as well because uh, i can see the overall look and feel of the character and at any time i can just uh, swipe out the pattern and uh, you can see that uh, uh, it's in 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 case of texturing you would have uh, specifically mask out this pattern on specific meshes uh, but in just sculpting i can just extract those faces and uh, tweak this however i want and these uh, references are just some random references which I downloaded from Google. So right now I just uh, added a cylinder and uh, then with simple deform I just uh, wrote it, uh, twist added a twist on top of it and uh, then extracted a single edge and converted that into a curve. And after that I draw a curve on the helmet and uh, the same thing I just add a curve deform modifier on top of it and uh, it's following the surface of the mesh so right now i'm just moving my edges uh, so that uh, i can generate a nice uh, crease like uh, surface on top of it <coughs> and here i'm generating a pattern as well the same way uh, for the top helmet piece i want to add some nice uh, bevels and uh, extrusions on top of it so right now i'm doing at this point I'm not doing anything new it's the same old thing just uh, masking extracting and if I want some pattern on it I will just add a displace modifier on top of it and uh, <coughs> increase adjust the strength of it so that uh, if I want some pattern to be uh, to have more depth I can just increase the strength or if at some point I just want uh, don't want a pattern there or change it to a different pattern then I can just uh, swipe it in the displace modifier so here as you can see that uh, I extracted these meshes in the same way and uh, right now I'm moving uh, these faces and uh, tweaking these out and uh, after that I added a solidify modifier and uh, on top of it I added a multi resolution modifier so most of my workflow revolves around the multi-resolution modifier because I think that it's uh, pretty optimized for Blender. If I was uh, uh, just manually using a remesh then it uh, would have been a lot of problem because it's not optimized and I, would, I wouldn't be able to subdivide it uh, that much. So for the arm piece I'm uh, doing the same thing, masking it out, extrud ex extruding it out and uh, then adding a multi-resolution modifier although I'm tweaking my topology on some points uh, because sometimes quadri measure doesn't give you a clean topology on the edges so as you can see that I'm tweaking uh, those things uh, I'm moving the vertices adding edge loops on some places and whenever I f uh, finish my one mesh I'm also looking at my references continuously and uh, I'm making sure that it uh, every mesh that I add uh, is uh, working well with the aesthetics of the character and you can see that I'm not diving too deeply into the details of the characters uh, because I think that it's a pretty early stage and uh, I will have to refine uh, each and every mesh a lot uh, later on uh, here you can see that I'm working on the clothes folds uh, normally I uh, divide my cloth folds uh, into multiple steps for example there are uh, X folds, there are Y folds and there are Z folds and uh, I, I'm adding those uh, folds into a crisscross pattern so that uh, it creates a nice dynamic shape on top of it and uh, as you can see that, uh, that I'm experimenting with the shapes with the different shapes and uh, uh, for the clothes uh, to generate, uh, I'm looking at the tension point, where the tension points start and where they end, and uh, how. Uh, and I'm also carefully sculpting the shape of the folds. I'm uh, making it like a curved, flared out pipe, uh, so that it feels like that uh, the that the folds are circular and round as much as possible. 
we also sculpt the material of the clothes in the folds as well for example if you have a thick leather material the folds will be soft and smooth and uh, if you have a cotton material the, the, then the folds will be sharp and uh, linear and as you can see that uh, right now the folds uh, doesn't look good uh, they look a lot messier because uh, uh, I'm just in the starting stage where I'm just working on the volumes and uh, thinking about where the tension points uh, of the uh, folds are, uh, where the folds uh, will originate, how they will interact with the rest of the mesh. And, uh, and the mesh was also starting to stretch because uh, at some point we didn't have enough resolution so I just remeshed it again and uh, added a multi-resolution modifier on top of it and uh, uh, you can see that it's a lot more smoother and uh, right now I'm working on the secondary uh, forms of the folds and uh, if I think that at some place uh, the folds doesn't look good I will just uh, tweak it out and uh, I just finalized the folds for now because uh, I know that I will be coming back uh, on it later and uh, right now I just uh, created a plane and uh, added more edges into it and then I tweaked the shape and uh, right now I'm just adding a bird like uh, planes uh, on the back of uh, this mesh and I will be adding this mesh on top of the helmet uh, so that I I just want uh, a majestic look on this character so I'm adding a lot of uh, this pattern on top of the helmet I will be also uh, adding uh, some pattern on top of this mesh and uh, as you can see that I'm adding uh, bevels on top of it so that's why I think it's uh, important if you don't add a displace modifier on this mesh because uh, uh, a beveled edges will have more resolution on some places and on some places it will have less resolution so right now you can see that I'm just uh, duplicating the inner faces because I just want pattern on that uh, specific location I don't want pattern on the edges so I just uh, I'm just duplicating those uh, inner faces and uh, I'm adding a multi resolution modifier along with the displace modifier and uh, since I have loaded textures uh, uh, before on some uh, some uh, other meshes I can just uh, pick those textures again and if I think that the pattern doesn't look good uh, I can change it uh, uh, with another pattern as well so right now as you can see that uh, I'm moving and duplicating my meshes and uh, I'm just working with different uh, design aspects and thinking about how they will uh, look on the character so after tweaking a lot uh, uh, on the helmet, uh, these meshes, although I didn't uh, record it that uh, pattern because it was just a back and forth process of duplicating and moving. Right now I'm working on the uh, neck part and I want a, a metal uh, golden uh, strip here for the neck mesh and i will also be adding some patterns on top of it and right now i'm just uh, highlighting those uh, ends by extrude, extruding some of the faces and then adding bevels on top of it and uh, on some places i'm adding just sub dv and modifier because uh, i knew that i don't want any more details on top of it and on some places i'm adding a multi resolution modifier because uh, I'm just thinking on runtime uh, where I want the details and where I don't want to add the details and uh, some of the uh, the details uh, will be going into the pattern and uh, uh, because I want some variation in the pattern that's why I'm just uh, extruding some of the faces and as you can see the for these curved meshes I'm using the same set edge flow add-on uh, which averages out the edges and uh, make them flow a bit nicer although I could have added a pattern at this stage but uh, I just want some meshes on top of it uh, because it will uh, add some uh, inorganic feeling on top of the pattern and uh, it will be uh, create it will be creating a nice breakup on top of it and I'm also carefully looking uh, on these small meshes and uh, I'm looking at it from a distance on and off 
and uh, looking at how it's visible whether it's creating some uh, breakup when I look at it from a distance or not so uh, whether to add some more curved uh, elements on top of it whether to explore it or whether this element is finalized uh, because I don't want uh, these elements to be blending in with the pattern which uh, I have added right now so I just want a nice breakup as you can see that uh, it uh, distinguishes between the pattern and below so right now these upper, upper strips are working correctly with the pattern behind it because they uh, look a bit blocky so I decided to add a multi resolution modifier on top of it and sculpt some nice curvy details on top of it so that it's complementing the pattern behind it uh, I think uh, you should have uh, multiple breakups in, uh, when you're working in your character you should have some bigger breakups then smaller breakups and then finer details and uh, even if you add a lot of uh, details on the characters and if uh, if each and every uh, detail is screaming at the same level and uh, they're not complementing each other then it will look weird and you can see that i have added some spheres on top of it uh, with the array modifier and then, then the curve modifier uh, so that it uh, creates a different uh, sh a breakup uh, for the shapes and uh, right now I'm working on the connection point for the, this neck element uh, with the element below uh, it and uh, I think it looks good for now so right now I'm just adding some additional pieces uh, to just break this surface up even more and uh, for the edges I always, uh, for this character especially, I always like to add some uh, thick paneling on, on the edges and right now the thickness weren't even so I'm just manually tweaking uh, those edges into place. At this point you might be thinking that uh, I might have a concrete design in my mind because I'm jumping from one mesh to another and uh, finalizing it. Uh, but that's not the case when I'm uh, stopping my recording I uh, think carefully about the next element I'm making because otherwise it will be a really long video if I'm going back and forth again and again uh, when you finalize the design in your mind it's, you just have to sculpt it or uh, finalize it here I'm also making some uh, additional uh, ornate patterns and uh, I'm using the same workflow as before I'm just uh, uh, creating a mesh and extruding it out and then adding some additional edges on top of it and uh, using the set edge flow add-on to just smooth out or average out the edge uh, average out the edges although I could have made this with a curve as well and right now you can see that I'm also changing the material on the pattern because uh, I think uh, 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 you adding some color variation on the pattern uh, will uh, add some additional uh, information to the design of the character and uh, it will also work with the aesthetics of it and you can also see that I'm um, tweaking uh, the colors of the materials as well because uh, uh, it gets me, uh, it helps me analyze the final colors when I'm texturing uh, my model and I'm also rendering it uh, on every step because uh, it helps me finalize the shapes and uh, uh, if there are lighting artifacts or if the mesh is uh, not capturing the light so well or the design elements are not so correct so it does help me uh, analyze those as well and uh, rendering also uh, uh, helps you define the material and the shader for example uh, uh, i wasn't sure whether i want to gold i want to go with a golden material or a bronze material uh, but uh, at the end i decided that i want to go with a more royal look for the character so i went uh, with a, a bit of a golden uh, touch on the character so right now I'm working on the uh, these uh, shoulder plates and uh, I could have just uh, modeled these out but uh, I, I just uh, modeling just uh, in modeling you spend a lot of time tweaking the vertices uh, and the shapes and you also have to uh, worry about the topology and the edge flow as well. So uh, 
when I'm just uh, working on the design of the character, I just uh, sculpt and, extru and uh, extract those masks and uh, for cleaning up the topology, I use quad remesher, which is uh, really handy and uh, it creates nice uh, quadded out geometry. And most of the cases, it gives you a flawless geometry, but uh, uh, on some points, it might give you some weird edges or weird edge flow on the corners as well. So I manually clean those up, and after that, I add a multi resolution modifier and. Uh, I also wanted a different kind of pattern on these shoulder plates as well so I added those and uh, I want some kind of spheres uh, etched onto those plates so I'm adding those as well and because in my design element I have added a lot of uh, curves on some other places so I decided to throw some uh, of those uh, curved meshes on the shoulder plates as well because uh, uh, it will look like uh, that like it's it has been th this whole armor has been made by a single artist because uh, the design elements will be consistent uh, throughout the character so i'm i'm adding those uh, curved shapes on these shoulder pads as well and uh, i'm also uh, changing the flow of the curves so that uh, uh, it's different on some curves and uh, you can also see that when I make a curve I duplicate it again and a add a thin strips on top of it because it will help me breaking up the character even more and uh, it will add some nice design elements on top of it. So right now I just want uh, some hanging elements uh, uh, near the shoulder plate so I just uh, duplicated a cylinder and then add a a simple deform modifier and added a twist on top of it and then I added a an array modifier to duplicate all those elements and uh, reform them on a curve and because uh, uh, these were just uh, some uh, strips of ropes I just I just want a nice uh, a golden cylinders uh, golden spheres on top of these ropes Although I didn't use this element uh, in the final step because it was uh, too long and it, was, uh, it wasn't working well with the design of the characters but the bottom piece which I am working on right now, uh, I find it uh, quite pleasing uh, with the design of the characters. Uh, so I did uh, use that and uh, in the start I did show you some references and uh, it was uh, in uh, this whole design element uh, was inspired from one of those references so that's why i said that uh, references are really important when you are working on a character because uh, it adds uh, a lot of uh, ideation uh, to your uh, models because you have a lot of variety to choose from and uh, for the, this mesh as well, I'm also materi adding materials on top of it, although I'm not adding a multi-resolution modifier because uh, I don't want to sculpt some details on top of it, neither do I want to add uh, some uh, uh, pattern detail on top of it. So because uh, I'm just uh, I want to add these hanging elements uh, uh, on the mesh on those uh, plates and uh, I want to, that's why I I have added an array modifier on top of it and right now I'm just uh, changing uh, the uh, radius uh, on the of the curve and uh, thinking whether it will work uh, or not and uh, and the mesh was penetrating so I just want more uh, volume on those plates so I just added a lattice uh, deformer uh, let us modify on top of it and tweak uh, these shoulder plates but uh, it wasn't working so well with the design so I just removed those uh, hanging uh, rope like threads and uh, I just decided that it shouldn't be so long because uh, uh, the character have to uh, move as well and uh, I have to think about the uh, rigging as well so uh, usually when you're working on character you also have to think about the rig as well uh, so for example if he has to if uh, this character has to move his uh, arms uh, a little bit up upward then those uh, rope uh, rope like uh, long elements uh, would have uh, hindered its movement and you can see that uh, whenever i finalize one element uh, I just take a render and uh, store it up uh, because I want to look uh, at a later stage whether 
it was a good choice or it was a bad choice or whether i uh, want to uh, go back uh, in my design a little bit uh, since I don't have a concrete uh, reference, uh, uh, this process is a lot of going back and forth, and uh, and uh, at every time, at every stage, uh, I need to think about the design, whether it's working well or whether I need to change some things uh, on my character. And uh, the modeling is uh, basically pretty simple. You just uh, add some meshes, add some edge loops, extract some faces, uh, duplicate them, rotate them. Uh, it's really pretty simple. I'm just not doing something new. And you can see that I'm also creating variation of these medallion pieces uh, because I, I want uh, different uh, medallions on my characters. And uh, for uh, if late, on later stage I want to change these meshes, I, I'm storing these meshes in a temporary folder as well. Uh, and uh, uh, before moving away from the grid, I just store a duplicate of it on uh, uh, on a temporary collection, so that if I want this mesh in a later stage, I have this mesh uh, in the center of grid. And as you can see that I'm uh, reusing that mesh and creating a different variation of this of this medallion uh, so that uh, it doesn't look so obvious that I'm uh, using the same medallion over and over again and uh, I did want some medallion pieces on the chest as well and uh, I'm doing the same thing of uh, like adding materials on, on these medallion pieces uh, like before and I check whether uh, the materials and the colors are working correctly or I I should just change the colors or do something a little bit different so uh, it helps uh, me uh, take the design to a final stage uh, by adding materials and colors uh, at this early stage I'm also thinking about uh, the rig as uh, at, at this point as well because uh, I need a full uh, a fully final product of this character and uh, since I'm also working in the game industry so it's my second nature to always uh, uh, verify the, the rig or uh, think about uh, how the character will move uh, in the environment so here I'm using uh, retopo flow to create some uh, uh, additional pieces uh, and uh, I'm using uh, a solidify modifier uh, to add some thickness on top of it and then a bevel modifier so that when I add a subdivision modifier or a multi resolution modifier it doesn't deform uh, so weirdly right now for the breastplates uh, I'm just uh, adding an additional mesh and uh, I'm adding a lot of uh, 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 creases by uh, extruding the surface and duplicating it out and you can see that uh, I also want a different kind of pattern on the breastplates as well and I'm also changing the color of the material for the breastplates as well because I want a nice uh, contrast on it uh, like a golden uh, ornament pattern is uh, etched on the fabric although I will do uh, this thing in a later stage in Substance Painter but I do want some colors on the meshes because uh, uh, it helps me finalize how the character will look after texturing it although I will be uh, changing a lot of colors to a, a diff, to a different color in the texturing process because uh, these are just some materials uh, uh, I don't know how they look but it just ha there to give me an idea and uh, here I'm adding some smaller beads in the same way by adding an array modifier on uh, some spheres and then a curve modifier and then uh, changing the distance between each instance and uh, it's the same process of just uh, duplicating some meshes and for the pattern it's same as well i'm just uh, selecting some of the faces because uh, this is uh, quadded out topology i can just easily select uh, some uh, faces duplicate them extrude them out and then add some multi-resolution multi modifier and uh, add some pattern on top of it Although uh, I'm thinking about the design at each and every step and uh, you can see that I'm uh, changing material back and forth and for the uh, uh, images for this pattern I just googled some uh, 
uh, images online and found the pattern that I think are helpful and uh, you can see that they are not uh, uh, bought from anywhere you can see the watermark on some of the images a a as well uh, but I'm hi hiding those uh, watermark uh, if I was doing this in texturing stage it would have been really difficult for me to hide those mo watermarks or the scenes as well for example in the sculpting stage there is one more benefit of adding the these patterns because uh, if there is seam on some places and i want to hide it i can just uh, create another mesh on top of it or i can just apply the multi resolution modifier and uh, sculpt those seams out uh, so that it doesn't look weird or although if i was in texturing stage and there was a seam then it would have been a uh, really painful process for me to, cl uh, to, to clean out uh, that seam so i think the uh, chest area and the uh, cloth meshes uh, are complementing with the character so i think they are finalized for now uh, but i do want some uh, different circular medallion types of a pattern on top of it on top of uh, the belly area uh, because uh, the other details are kind of flat and I want a nice break up on top of it so right now I'm working on those circular pieces and the process is totally same I'm just uh, uh, using a sphere to uh, just add some uh, details on top of it and uh, use the same process uh, for making those curved meshes and du duplicating them in a circular ma manner and uh, right now you can see that I have a lot of meshes which I have placed on the grids, grid and uh, I have added those in a temporary collection and uh, I'm also adding some patterns on these medallions as well because uh, I want a circular uh, breakup and I want to have these medallions uh, continue downward so so I'm working on that and I'm using my already geometry to extrude out uh, additional meshes because uh, I think it's easier to use the geometry you have instead of just adding a new plane and then moving into uh, moving it into place and then extruding it out and sometimes I use uh, Retopo Flow 3 to add some additional meshes on top of it and uh, uh, for uh, for these curved meshes, I just add a single uh, edge loop in the center and uh, press Alt S to move it outward, and then adding a bevel on top of it. And uh, after that, I add a subdivision modifier. So right now, I'm not uh, worrying about the poly count of the mesh because I know that I will be uh, baking all of these high poly meshes onto the lower poly meshes. Although I won't be uh, doing a final repo apart from the head uh, and the body meshes because uh, I think the quadri measure gives me a cl clean uh, uh, even out uh, topology. If if it was some uh, a game character, then I would have uh, uh, really needed to repo the mesh because uh, uh, I need to reduce the polygon. Right now each and every meshes are uh, separate meshes and they are layered on top of each other. Uh, if it was a game model, uh, I really didn't need that because it's unnecessary wasting my polygons and uh, increasing the, uh, the number of polygons and the mesh size as well. For the game, I would definitely have to retopo it again because a uh, uh, lot of the meshes are layered on top of each other and the, for baking to work correctly, I would have to retopo. And right now I'm working on the pants. Uh, the process is the same. I just uh, masked uh, uh, some area on the body and uh, extracted those out. And then I used quad remesher to just uh, generate a clean uh, up mesh. And uh, right now I'm using uh, just a uh, draw brush to create some nice pores. And for these sharp lines, uh, sharp lines I'm using uh, the draw sharp brush. And I'm going back and forth on the wrinkles and uh, because this mesh is uh, kind of skin tight on the model I want uh, the folds to be pretty sharp and pretty clean uh, although it's if it was a baggy pants or some kind of loose pants uh, then I would have uh, a kind of uh, bigger softer folds on the cloth mesh 
So right now I'm working on, on the handles of the of the belts because I want to hang some additional elements uh, uh, from the belts, and uh, I want to hang some straps from the mesh as well. So right now the hip part of the mesh is uh, kind of pretty flat, and I do want some uh, new details uh, to be uh, new details and new meshes. Uh, to be added on the hip element so I decided to start with a, a circular piece uh, for the belts uh, because it will uh, uh, it will be a nice starting point uh, for me to add some hanging elements from the belt as well so uh, right now I'm doing that and uh, uh, I'm also carefully looking at my references for this uh, design element and you can see that uh, on some places I just uh, reuse my mesh by duplicating some of the faces and uh, adding uh, solidify modifier and uh, adding subrevian modifier as well and wherever I need some hard edges I add uh, some bevels uh, some really nice uh, uh, closed uh, bevels on top of it to keep the mesh sharp and tight and you can also see that uh, in modeling you have to carefully look at the edge flow of the model as well uh, which is really uh, necessary uh, otherwise uh, if you add uh, subdivision uh, modifier on top of an unclean mesh it will just uh, look jagged and weird and there will be a lot of unnecessary bumps on top of it as well while working on this uh, on this mesh I'm also uh, thinking about the design elements of my character and you can see that uh, I just throw some curved surfaces here and there because uh, uh, these curves uh, are added on a lot of my armor pieces and design elements uh, to make them show that uh, all of this uh, uh, this armor plates and this this whole costume is made by a single person uh, in that environment and uh, it also shows uh, a consistency in the design as well and apart from consistency it just uh, makes the whole uh, design work together really well and because I have added a a pattern on most of my metal surfaces and uh, therefore I want to add a pattern here as well and uh, you might be thinking that I'm throwing in a lot of polygons but uh, my PC is uh, not struggling uh, as much because uh, as I've told you for a single mesh you should uh, keep uh, the number of polygons uh, uh, between uh, 3 to 5 million and uh, you can see that for the patterns I just duplicate and make this uh, a separate mesh and uh, uh, for blender it's very easy to handle those polygons that way uh, because if you add all the polygons uh, on a single mesh uh, blender will be really struggling uh, and to render those uh, polygons that's why I think it's uh, pretty uh, easy or pretty uh, performance uh, wise uh, performance wise uh, less intensive on the blender to add just add a pattern on a separate mesh and uh, uh, because uh, a lot of polygons it's not wasted on that because uh, you add a pattern on a really small place place and uh, if you want a di different pattern on some other place it will definitely be a separate mesh and in that way uh, you uh, divide uh, the overall polygon along a large number of meshes and which is very easy for a uh, blender to render those out and for the multi resolution modifier i use that a lot because uh, uh, i can always sculpt those detail on a higher level and on in viewport i can just uh, uh, set the sub multi resolution level to a lower number for example uh, if i'm sculpting on a multi -res multi resolution level of uh, five sub dimensions and uh, I can set the viewport subdivision to just uh, two or three uh, levels and uh, 
at time because uh, when i'm sculpting i just have to look at uh, and blender just have to look at the, the, that specific portion so it's very easy for me to work on that and as you can see that on some places uh, i'm just uh, manually sculpting those uh, ornament pattern as well because uh, uh, it helps me uh, it helps me to make the design a bit more unique uh, if I add just throw in a single pattern it will look weird and it will look uh, kind of uh, repetitive and uh, which will add a bad effect on the overall, overall design of the character so I just threw in some elements here and there as a variation and uh, you can see that here I'm adding a, working on a different element and working on a different detail as well some linear details and uh, some curved de details here and there and uh, you can see that for every mesh that I extract from uh, another mesh I do add some paneling on the edges because I think that uh, they look nice and here you can see that I have a scene in the pattern as well uh, because this pattern is, uh, is working on the UVs uh, I just uh, unwrap them and uh, throw in a texture and you can see that here I'm cleaning up uh, those seams and sometimes I just clean up with a different uh, approach sometimes I add an additional mesh on top of it sometimes I just manually sculpt and remove those seams as well and uh, you can see that uh, for the bracers I just model it on the grid because uh, uh, when I was modeling the basic forms I want it to be mirrored on both sides because otherwise uh, it uh, it will look uh, weird for the bracers as well so right now I'm working on some additional clothing pieces uh, that will be hanging down from the hips so uh, the process is the same I just masked out some area and then extracted those out and then I used the quad remesher add-on to generate some nice clean topology I really like the quad remesher add-on because uh, I don't have to worry about the topology or the cleaner mesh uh, uh, too much and the blender remesher doesn't uh, work on the single sided surfaces so that's why I prefer this quad remesher as well and because it does work on a single sided mm, mm, single sided meshes and uh, uh, if I'm sculpting on a double sided meshes it's uh, uh, really difficult for me uh, to work on both sides and uh, sometimes the thickness is uneven on some places so when I'm working on really thin surfaces like the cloth meshes uh, I just think about uh, uh, adding adding more uh, details and just uh, sculpting uh, uh, some folds nice folds on top of it uh, because obviously if it was double sided meshes I would have to sculpt uh, folds on both sides or uh, and tweak thickness of the mesh again and again but because this is single sided and obviously I don't want single sided meshes on a uh, on a game model Although it's not going to be used in a game, but uh, because I'm wired that way, I always think about the back face culling uh, that's going to show through the uh, on the single sided meshes. So what I do is basically just uh, after the baking and the texturing has been finalized, I just uh, add thickness to these meshes and in that way I can save some uh, UV space and save some texture space uh, as well. and. Uh, I get a double sided uh, mesh as well and uh, there won't be any back faces culling in the character as well. So the folds uh, on uh, this clothes piece uh, I'm sculpting it in the same way as I have sculpted the previous mesh. Uh, I'm just thinking about the where the tension points are and I'm generating uh, uh, folds using uh, the draw brush and uh, I, I know that the, the, the tension point is uh, below the hip element where the cloth piece is going to attach and that's why I'm uh, I'm just uh, sculpting the folds from there because uh, it works as a nice origin point uh, for the folds to start from and and slowly uh, uh, making uh, adding some volume to the folds when they are 
when they are reaching to the bottom of the mesh and at some point i am masking additional folds because uh, uh, i want the folds to be really close and tight and because uh, on this type of meshes the folds are uh, generally a lot bigger and they almost interact with each other so that's why i'm marking masking one fold and then sculpting on the other and here right now i'm adding some additional straps and uh, i'm using the same uh, process like uh, i'm just using retopo to create some additional uh, faces or sometimes i use mask to uh, draw a mask and extract those out and then use quad remesher to clean up uh, that topology and uh, as always i'm adding some uh, paneling on the edges of it and uh, i'll do add some smaller beads because they are a nice complement to the design elements and uh, for those beads i have added on, on a lot of meshes and it makes uh, the mesh look like uh, like it's made in the same environment or made by the same person so right now i just want some uh, hanging part uh, because i want to give this character a royal feel to it so i'm just adding a lot of elements uh, on top of it to give it a royal look and the process is the, uh, really same um, I'm not doing anything new at this point I'm just uh, uh, duplicating some of the faces and adding solidify modifier on top of it and uh, adding those uh, edge extrusions on some places and sometime I use uh, same medallions that I have made uh, previously because uh, the hip element will not be as much as the focus point as the face uh, body or the other elements so i'm uh, uh, pretty easy going at this point and uh, using the mesh that i have worked on previously and duplicating those out and i'm also creating a variation in the design elements because i do uh, want some uh, linear element instead of uh, curved elements and right now i'm working on some uh, sunflower type of uh, shape here on the hips because uh, uh, the details that have I have been adding uh, looks pretty similar so I don't want uh, the character to be similar at this point I, I just want to, uh, to have some nice uh, uh, breakup and uh, I want different types of details on top of my character and as you can see that uh, I'm also adding a gentle bend on top of it and uh, this does look uh, good with the design so i'm just adding materials on top of it and taking a render uh, and you can see that i'm also ch changing the color because whenever i think that something doesn't look good or this color might uh, uh, is looking weird or i should change it to a different color uh, that's why i i do set up a lighting in the start of uh, in the start of my model because uh, it will help me uh, finalize the idea and right now i'm working on the foot elements and uh, i have drawn the mask and uh, extracted those meshes out and uh, i'm tweaking those uh, meshes and after that i use the quadrant measure to clean up uh, that topology and uh, because uh, it's going to be kind of a metal part on the edges and uh, a fabric part on uh, in the middle so i do want this mesh to be really tied to the skin so that's why i tweaked it a lot before adding a solidify or the multi-resolution modifier i'm also throwing in some pattern on top of it because uh, uh, it will complement uh, all of the design so that's why uh, when I was working on the foot, uh, I didn't added those uh, fingers or the toes uh, because uh, it's going to be hidden and uh, I just want to sculpt the shoes. Uh, I don't want to waste my uh, time on the body elements. That's why when the primary or uh, when the secondary forms of the body elements were finalized, I just moved on to the clothing and the other meshes. 
and right now i'm working on uh, the sole uh, for the shoes and uh, i use uh, already uh, the mesh that i have already generated and selected some faces and then duplicated those out and snap the vertices on top of the surface and you can see for some meshes i just use retopo flow uh, to generate some additional topology on top of it uh, to create some uh, additional elements for the shoes as well and uh, so these are all different ways of generating mesh you can uh, if you are comfortable with uh, modeling and you don't want to use retopo flow 3 you can just use the basic blender tools to create some additional meshes as well so right now here i, I used uh, an instance because uh, i want the all element all the elements to be similar i just press alt t and then rotate it to uh, 45 or 60 degrees and uh, add it a solidify modifiers and uh, after the mesh shape is finalized I just uh, make the instances real and then add a subdivision modifier on top of it and uh, I think uh, I will I'll finalize the meshes at that point and uh, if I want some extrusions on the edges I do add those as well and if i want some patterns i just do the uvs for the meshes and uh, add a multi-resolution modifier along with the displace modifiers and along with the textures so the, for the patterns i'm using just uh, three to four images which uh, i think uh, were complementing the design of the character and i'm just uh, repeating rep repeating the same process of adding those uh, patterns on the meshes uh, and I think this is a nice technique uh, in Blender. Although when I was working on uh, working in ZBrush, it was uh, really hard for me to add some patterns. Uh, for in ZBrush, I use the uh, Noise Maker uh, plugin to add some patterns, but it wasn't uh, as good as uh, this one. I think it does have a lot more control and I can use I can do the UVs pretty quickly in Blender as well. So right now I'm just finalizing my accessory piece and uh, I'm also adding materials on top of it and I'm also uh, rendering it on and off to see how the shapes are working uh, whether they are complementing with the design of the character or not and uh, i'm also attaching this uh, to the leather belts which which are connected to the hip part and right now i'm moving to the next accessory shape i took a cylinder then extruded shapes out then added uh, edge loops and uh, beveled those out to make it uh, a nice smooth corner and uh, right now i'm just adding some uh, additional edge loops and uh, cutting some panels uh, inside it to make it look like it's uh, uh, made of multiple pages and uh, the process is uh, same I just add a subdivision modifier on top of it and if I want to add some patterns uh, uh, I do that and uh, for this uh, for this piece spec specifically I'm using a multi-resolution modifier uh, because I wanted some uh, fine wrinkles on top of it and uh, right now I just want a leather piece on top of it so I drew the mask extracted that out and uh, using draw sharp brush to cut in some nice uh, lines into the mesh and uh, I'm using draw brush to uh, add some inflation on the edges as well and uh, also I used the draw, sharp, draw brush to add some fine wrinkles on top of it and right now I'm just throwing in some uh, patterns on different uh, places by using the same workflow but by just adding a multi resolution modifier and uh, adding a displace modifier on top of it so that it doesn't look weird because displace modifier uh, I think it's pretty handy to uh, add pat patterns easily and I think it's a nice workflow for adding uh, details pretty quickly and uh, since the secondary forms of the shape uh, of the face were finalized so I'm moving back on top of it again and you can see that I'm just uh, refining all those all those shapes right now so when I'm working on the faces I start from the big shapes first for example uh, the brush intensity uh, at first is pretty high and I work on the major landmarks and as, at a, 
add a lot of volume uh, pretty quickly and right now I'm uh, at a stage where I think I should uh, retopo the mesh and uh, if I want to add more details on top of it I will uh, add those by using a multi resolution modifier because uh, by using the remesh you cannot uh, subdivide it uh, as much as you can with the multi resolution modifier so that's why I'm uh, doing a retopo for the face first because I want to add some finer details and wrinkle uh, stuff on top of the face and uh, I'm using the retopo flow 3 right now to generate some nice clean edge looks for the faces the poly generation uh, process is uh, pretty easy you just add uh, circular loops where the muscles are and uh, because uh, we want the deformation according to the muscles as well so we add those loops according to the muscle underneath for example near the eyes and the lips we want circular loops because uh, the orbital muscles are circular and the lip muscles are circular as well so that's why it's uh, really important to add circular geometry along the lips and along the eyes and then we need also need some circular uh, loops along the whole head as well because uh, we want the deformations uh, to be exactly like that when we are uh, rigging or animating the character so normally when you are working on a game uh, character or a movie character you usually uh, make the uh, eyes closed uh, when you are sculpting uh, because uh, if you uh, UV out uh, with the eyes open then uh, and uh, later on you just uh, do a blink blend shape or uh, do a blink animation then the texture will be stretching uh, right now this character wasn't uh, is not going to be used in the game or in movies so i'm not really worrying about that at the at this moment and you can see that i'm qu quickly generating a uh, topology with uh, the retopo flow add-on uh, you can also do this uh, by using the conventional blender tools but i find this uh, really easy because uh, you can easily relax all the meshes all the topology if they are uneven and if you if you're using uh, the blender uh, conventional tools it's uh, pretty uh, time taking when you have to relax all those topology as well so right now I'm working on the inner portion of the mouth part because uh, I want to have some mouth elements even though I'm not going to animate uh, or not going to create some blend shapes but I still want some inner mouth so I'm doing that and right now I'm transferring all the details from the sculpt by adding a shrink wrap modifier on top of it and uh, as you can see that uh, uh, there were some uh, weird bumps which uh, which have been added uh, through shrink wrap uh, modifiers and I'm fixing that as well and uh, right now I'm just uh, refining all those forms and I'm adding thickness to the eyelids as well because normally uh, eyelids are pretty thick you shouldn't just add a line uh, for the eyelids you should add some form as well and I'm also uh, rendering it out pretty uh, pretty on and off because I want to see the forms in different lighting scenario and right now I'm working on the lips and I'm making sure that all the fat pads are uh, visible and uh, they do have some form on the lips as well normally for the shape of the lips uh, I think uh, uh, the basic shape is like a cupid's bow and uh, I'm I'm making sure that the shape and the form is there for the lips as well for the eye it's uh, pretty time taking and pretty uh, a difficult process to refine the eyes so you can see that I'm going back and forth on the eyes as well uh, for the hands I think uh, it's most challenging after the faces and uh, it takes uh, for me it takes a lot of time to work on the hands and making sure all the bony landmarks are there and uh, I just don't want to refine all the uh, all the fingers one after the other I just want to uh, work on single fi uh, one finger and then duplicate the rest of finger from there so I just deleted all the other fingers and right now I'm working on uh, this uh, 
uh, index finger and uh, I'm also adding some fine uh, wrinkles on top of it although I won't be taking the detail of the hand same level as the face because uh, uh, it won't be the focal point of my character as well so you can see that I'm uh, exaggerating the bony landmarks for the hands as well so right now I just duplicated the finger and moved it into place and uh, now I'm going to just remesh this whole thing so that it's uh, a single welded mesh and after that I will be re re refining all, the, all these fingers separately and you can see that I'm using the basic brushes like the draw brush or the clay builder brush or the move brush and right now I just duplicated the index finger for the thumb and I just remeshed it again and uh, I'm also refining the shape of it uh, to make it look like it's a thumb and uh, for the hands it's uh, really important to have some bony landmarks underneath it and uh, now I just want to have some clean topology for the hands and for that I'm using uh, the retop of low add-on again uh, to quickly generate some uh, good circular loops around the fingers and now I'm using uh, the same add-on to weld uh, the fingers in between and you can see that uh, the uh, retop of low 3 has a lot of uh, uh, good tools and you can generate a lot more topology pretty quickly and uh, especially on the fingers like meshes you just have to draw a line and it will create a circular edge loops around that mesh and uh, and after the geometry has been completed uh, I just threw, threw in a multi resolution modifier along with the shrink wrap modifier on top of it to just pro project all those details that I have sculpted before and right now I'm working on the staff of the character uh, because this character is a, a wizard so I want some kind of a magical staff with some uh, uh, nice uh, emissive elements or some nice stones embedded into it so I started with the cylinder then extruded the shape into place and then added some edge loops and some bevels uh, to round it out and right now I'm working on the stone part for, for the character uh, and I do want some uh, nice hard edges on top of it and for that I'm using a scrape brush and flatten brush on and off to generate some nice creasing on top of it and after that after the uh, volume were finalized I just uh, do a uh, clean remesh on top of it and then I added a multi resolution modifier so can I so that I can subdivide it uh, uh, to the best of my computer app computer's abilities and right now I just took a duplicate and then uh, put it into place so that uh, uh, the whole stony part shouldn't look like it's just one single mesh uh, I want to I want it to have a stone uh, stone like feel so that's why I'm duplicating it and uh, uh, putting it uh, near each other and then remeshing it and uh, so that it can create some nice uh, edge breakup and right now I'm uh, moving to the stuff and uh, I think I do want some uh, curves here for this stuff so I'm just duplicating the curve and moving it into place and here I used proportional editing to create a nice fall off for it and right now I just added some thickness and converting it into mesh and uh, for the edges I just want a nice ending on top of it with some uh, gems embedded into it so I just extruded those, those faces out and uh, I play, replaced the gems and right now I just uh, took a duplicate and rotated them out I'm also adding some uh, golden material on top of it and uh, on some places I'm just using some material variation and uh, uh, looking at uh, whether it's working with the design of the character or not and uh, Right now I just uh, shifted my focus onto the cornea of the character and uh, In order to convey gaze of uh, in 3d. So there is some uh, corneal bulge uh, On the cornea although it's a transparent element, but it helps convey the gaze for the character and here I'm also finalizing how big my iris is going to be you can see that I'm also adding some uh, transparency uh, transmission on top of the cornea 
and uh, right now I just, I'm working on the iris I'm I, I'm just trying to sculpt all those fine uh, layers uh, of the iris and uh, there are uh, different kinds of uh, fine lines on the iris for example if you're working on a brown eyes uh, it then it will have some uh, bigger breakup uh, and if you are working on some blue eyes or or some uh, lighter tone eyes then it will have some finer uh, veins or finer eyes breakup and uh, this is reduced from the, some real life references and you can find all those references uh, of different eye colors online and you will see that they all have a different kind of breakups on top of it and i'm carving all this detail using a uh, draw sharp brush and uh, i'm also using radial symmetry on top of it uh, so that i don't have to sculpt each and every line uh, on this whole mesh because it will be kind of a very repetitive and time process and right now i'm just um, um, shifting my focus onto the outer part of the veins uh, where the thicker veins are originating from and uh, i want a separate materials uh, because i want a separate material and i will be baking the iris onto a separate texture onto a separate 4k sheet so I'm trying to add as much uh, details uh, here uh, because eyes uh, are the most important element when you look at a character so I just want to add as much detail as possible here and as you can see that uh, I'm adding really fine wrinkles and even though they won't be seen from the distance but uh, uh, it will uh, help uh, convey that the character's eyes are really real realistic at the end. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time sculpting all these finer details and I'm also inflating some of the wrinkles to give it a crisscross pattern that they're moving up and then going through like they're tangled with each other. So after the iris has been finalized, I just want some uh, skin alphas. So I took a plane and I'm just working on the skin pores. Uh, so a single skin pore look like, looks like a, uh, a big uh, dent with a lot of skin compression around it. So I'm just replicating that form and then I added a gradient texture on top of it, added a camera on top of it as well and then just rendered it out and I then duplicated a plane to create some variations in skin pores and I also uh, created some alphas for the blackheads uh, which you can see right now and uh, usually you start with a single alpha and uh, then you you cre create an array of uh, different skin pores and you can see that right now I'm working on the skin pores array and this is how the skin pores are for our our face and this is how they uh, look uh, if you if you are looking through a microscope or if you're looking at uh, some really high res images for the uh, face and you can see that I'm also after adding some uh, of these pores I'm also connecting them with each other so that they look like they are all all a single uh, single connected piece of skin so right now I'm working on some finer wrinkles for uh, different places like the neck uh, because I'm going to throw on uh, throw some basic pores on uh, the skin first then I'm going to add these fine wrinkles uh, on top of the neck part where there is a lot of uh, compression going on in the skin and uh, uh, this will look good when it's uh, added with this uh, with the skin pores on top of it and uh, right now I'm just adding some breakups and make it look like it's skin because previously I just added some uh, straight lines and it wasn't looking like skin uh, so I just added some more breakups and you can see that uh, when I uh, apply those uh, skin forms in a circular motion it just creates a nice criss cross uh, 
crisscross skin like pattern on top of it so right now i'm just working on a knuckles alpha and uh, i'm going to use this alpha for the fingers and uh, for some other places where i think that this is going to be useful uh, for the alphas i'm using uh, the same brushes that i'm using before it's mostly standard brush or it's it's mostly draw brush or draw sharp brush and here i made a big really big mistake because i didn't know, knew that there was a, a midpoint value for the alphas and later that i came to know that in blender we do have a midpoint value although it's uh, named a bit differently in blender uh, it's called a sample bias and it's uh, located in your texture tab uh, so that's why I wasn't able to change uh, the intensity of the skin pores when adding it uh, and right now I'm just uh, really with less intensity I'm just adding all those pores single handedly and uh, if I knew about this sample bias feature beforehand uh, then all these pores would have been really sharp and uh, would have been really nice and crisp and uh, on the neck I do added those uh, fine wrinkles for the lips I didn't uh, want to use the uh, fine wrinkles alpha because uh, for the lips there are a lot of different kinds of shape and I just there are a lot there is a lot more appealing appealing lips and uh, sculpting lips, lips they, uh, took me a lot of time it took me an hour just to sculpt uh, those lips and all those fine details and as you can see I'm using uh, the draw sharp brush most of the time and some uh, inflate brush here and there to just give it a pudgy feel I'm also making sure that we have some symmetry breakup uh, in the middle so that it doesn't look too symmetrical on both ends and right now I'm moving to the upper upper lips and uh, I'm also making sure that uh, the transition from uh, lips to the skin is uh, pretty clear and uh, I'm also making sure that we do have a form change uh, when we are transitioning from lips to the skin and uh, as you can see that I'm using a mixture of different types of uh, breakup we do have some big uh, uh, deep cuts and then we do have some sharp uh, and fairly nice cuts and I'm using a mixture of it together to create uh, some nice uh, detailed uh, lips and uh, I do like to do this manually because I think that uh, it does add a more natural feel to it and right now I'm using to that bumpy alpha to create some additional breakup on top of the lips and uh, then I'm just uh, finalizing all those uh, fine wrinkles uh, by just going uh, on top of it again using the draw sharp brush to refine it a bit more and you can see that it's uh, pretty much the same process and I'm using uh, all the similar techniques that I have used to sculpt all those previous meshes it's just a lot of hard work to just uh, going back and forth and refining all those shapes again and again and right now I'm just working on the crinkle area uh, and uh, I want to make the eyes uh, feel a bit more realistic that's why I, I added those and right now I'm adding all those knuckles alphas and I'm also adding some fine wrinkles alpha which I created uh, on the fingers as well for the nails I'm just uh, using the draw sharp brush to carve in some nice fine uh, details although I will be adding to the nails mesh separately because uh, uh, it will be easy for me to I UVs them separately and it will be easy for me to mask them in Substance Painter and texture these out as well. 
so I'm adding uh, all those uh, nails separately here for the thumb nails I just uh, made it a bit thicker than the rest of uh, the nails and right now I'm just doing the UVs for my character for the face and the hand I'm using a 4k texture map uh, sheet because uh, I just want uh, because this is just a portfolio piece and uh, I want a lot of uh, details on top of it for the eyes uh, for the iris I'm using a separate material and for the cornea I'm using a separate material as well although for the iris I will be texturing it in 2k or maybe 4k for the baking uh, I use Marmoset tool bag and uh, you can see that uh, I named all the high poly and low poly models accordingly so that uh, I don't have to make the bake groups uh, separately in Marmoset tool bag and I also bake the rest of the meshes uh, similarly as well uh, if you want uh, to learn uh, uh, more about the marmoset baking you can just watch some of uh, really easy tutorial on their channel on the marmoset official channel and right now i'm just texturing the face and the, for the face uh, you should find some references for the color tones of the face and uh, right now i'm just uh, adding some of the reds uh, on the face where I think that there are a lot of the blood veins underneath the meshes I'm add, adding a lot of reds there so usually you divide the face texture into uh, multiple colors like the red uh, and the blues and the yellows so for the reds you, you usually add those where there is a lot of blood going under the skin for example when a person is blushing uh, <laughs> his cheeks to get red so you can see that there are a lot of uh, arteries underneath the cheeks so all the blood gushes out and usually a person's cheeks are red so we add some red colors uh, there for the blues we add it uh, where there are a lot of veins uh, because veins are usually blue and they add a blue color on top of uh, the skin uh, so we do add some uh, blues near the eyes and uh, if you the person is uh, male then the beard area uh, in the beard area as well we do some uh, paint some blues there as well for the yellows we do paint uh, the yellows where the bony landmarks are really close to the skin for example the head uh, the head bone and the cheekbones and uh, the mandible area where the bone is really close to the skin some of the yellow colors of the bones show through the skin so uh, we do add that uh, yellow uh, tones in the skin as well so right now i'm painting the iris and uh, i'm just throwing different colors on top of it and uh, on some places i do add some uh, generator uh, some curvature generator to uh, get those nice uh, a fine lines uh, uh, from the iris which I baked before so that's why I use uh, a marmoset because uh, I think it's uh, it generates really nice bakes and uh, after this uh, new recent release of uh, substance painter 8.3 I think substance do give really nice uh, baking feature as well and uh, they replicated almost all the features of Marmoset uh, in Substance Painter and at the time of uh, working on the tutorial uh, Marmoset was the industry standard and it has the best baking tools uh, that you can find in the software and some people do like to bake in Blender I wouldn't recommend that uh, for a really detailed character because I think it's, it's a lot slower and it, it takes a lot of time and you have to bake each and every mesh separately although I haven't done baking in blender personally apart from just uh, creating some alphas or other stuff so right now I'm working on the uh, body and uh, cloth pieces I just want a golden material on top of it so as a base I just threw in some uh, smart materials from substance painter and uh, you can see that I'm adding some additional layers and uh, I'm using multiple generator like the AO generator or the curvature generator 
uh, and uh, I do add uh, a multiple variation of uh, these generator as well to create some different effects to add some different color as well and uh, I'm also using uh, some some of the grunge maps to add some additional uh, breakup in the material as well to add some uh, different colors uh, in the material and uh, after that I instance those material uh, across uh, different uh, texture sets uh, so that I don't have to change uh, this material again and again or copy or duplicate this material to a separate uh, uh, texture set so I think it's uh, pretty handy to just instantiate those materials so that when I'm changing material on one texture set it's all uh, it's uh, easily replicated on the other texture set as well and as you can see that I have a lot of uh, ID maps uh, IDs baked in because all these meshes were uh, separate and uh, I make uh, I baked an ID map based on different meshes in uh, uh, Marmoset, I think it's called object ID map uh, which I baked so I can just quickly assign a different material on top of the pattern because the pattern was a different mesh so that's al also one of the reasons that I added all those patterns in the sculpt stage because I think it's uh, uh, for the baking it really helped me to generate an ID for all those patterns and you can see that uh, I can pretty e easily just mask mask out those IDs in Substance Painter, and I can add some uh, a different color on top of it, so that it uh, creates nice variation for the texture as well. For the cloth pieces, uh, I'm using uh, some basic cloth materials and uh, then adding some fill layers along with some fill masking on. Uh, uh, some uh, of the grunge maps and I'm also using the messy fibers uh, Grayscale image which uh, which does ship with substance painter by default and and I'm using that to create some nice uh, Edgy masks on top of it right now. I'm just uh, texturing the accessories so texturing is uh, a pretty uh, complicated process uh, I'm not really good at texturing uh, right now as well so I'm also uh, learning that for now and uh, I'm just thinking about uh, creating a lot of different color variations because uh, I'm using a lot of uh, resolution on the character so I just want a different uh, color breakup different detail breakup and different shapes breakup on the texture as well and while I'm texturing uh, it in Substance Painter, I do export all of my texture in uh, textures and apply those textures in Blender. And I look at those uh, textures in different lighting scenario to see whether they are working correctly, whether they look nice in Blender as well. I do test that in different lighting scenario. Uh, so that if there is some mistake going on in the, in the texture, I should change that. And for the hairs, I'm using a particle system, and uh, I do selected some vertex vertices and uh, created a vertex group on top of it. And I'm using those vertex groups to generate some uh, hair particles. And you can see that I'm just manually adding some uh, of the particles and uh, it create it just uh, gives me a nice uh, clump a nice base to work on later I will be converting this hair uh, uh, particles into some uh, curves here which is a new blender hair system because I think it's uh, easy to generate a base in uh, blender blender particles because uh, if I do this in uh, with the new hair system, I will have to my manually create all the geometry node graphs for the clumping and for, for the noise. Uh, and I'm not really good with the geometry nodes because uh, because I cannot just uh, write a clumping modifier. I tried writing it, but it uh, looks a lot weirder. So I didn't want to do that and I just want to use the clump of the hair particles. So 
uh, for the base because uh, later I'm going to convert it uh, into the new curve system and it will allow me to create some finer hair breakup and you can see that uh, right now I'm working on the eyebrows uh, and uh, I didn't use some uh, children uh, children's hair particles on uh, here because uh, I just want to have some uh, random hair generated uh, for the eyebrows and just styled or combed those into shapes for the eyelashes I'm doing the same process and uh, if there are some gaps or some unevenness in the eyelashes I'm adding some uh, uh, new hair particles uh, manually and you can see that uh, I'm also changing the length of these eyebrows particles manually by using uh, the length brush or the shorten brush and you can see that I'm also uh, making the eyelashes long on some places and uh, I'm also tweaking the meshes uh, for the eyebrows on some uh, points because I think the eyebrows weren't flowing according to the mesh of the face so here I just converted uh, all the particles uh, into the new hair system, into the curved hair system and you can see that I'm masking some portion of the hairs and then manually moving them into places. And uh, I think uh, that's how I finalize uh, all the hairs and then I did some geometry notes modify on top of it. So if you like the video do subscribe to my channel and share the tutorial with your friends. If you want me to help grow this channel you can show your support on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.